so i've already told you that um we will be learning character sequence numerical sequence and vice versa in this uh, small tutorial so let's get started we have five goals we will first learn how to read and print text data uh, that we will be learning and then we'll create a vocabulary of characters uh, from the text data and then we will change these characters to numbers and vice versa we will encode and decode the sentences using this whole mapping of characters to numbers and then we will see some real time reading the text data file and transforming the text now you may not have understood why we are doing this each of the steps so as we uh, progress you will see the story on you know unfolding in front of you so let's get started so let's say you have some text i hope you can see the screen uh, let me zoom in a bit so let's say you have some text um, we are defining let's say Hello, I'm going to learn LLM, woohoo. So now you want to, so this is a text string. So text is input as a string. Now you want to print the text. Uh, you can print it and you will see it's, it's coming up like this. And you can also print uh, what is the type of the text. And you can see it's a string. Um, you can also print a subset of the text. Um, let's say first 200 characters and it will just, oh, it's first 200 characters a lot. Uh, so let's say the first 10 characters. And so you can see the, the space is also taken as a character because if you just uh, take seven, then also it will come hello comma. And if you want to take eight, then also it will come hello comma, but there will just, oh, uh, so let's, let's try to understand this. So what I mean is that If you have hello and if you want to, so let's say, let's try to print the length of it. So if you want to see, this is six, right? Uh, which is also it's five. So essentially uh, they are taking in um, the five, uh, like it's, it's considering space as a character. So that's important. So we have understood how to read and print our text data, right? So next part is creating a vocabulary of this text. So let's let's create a preliminary text. Let's say, um, hello, let's learn. Let's, uh, hello, I am just free to which. So now what we'll do is we'll create a vocabulary of characters. Now, why? Because why a vocabulary is important because let's say you have another text. Let's say, hello, I am not Sri Mukherjee. Now, if you if you do this, you have different texts, but they have a lot of uh, commonalities and also a lot of output. So what you need to do is that to convert this, remember the goal is to convert a text into a numeric sequence, a character sequence into a numeric sequence. So why you need to do this? What you need to do is that you need to have a unique set of characters inside each text, right? And then assign numbers to them and then decode it back to a bigger text. So first we need to create a vocabulary, like the letters, let's say, and the spaces and all those things. So how to create the vocabulary? Um, so that's a goal. That's a goal of uh, to create a vocabulary. It's like a, it's the unique set of characters involved in a larger sample of text. And uh, yeah. So let's create a vocabulary. So what we need to do is that we need to convert this text into a, this is text ordered kind of array, right? Ordered kind of array of characters. So now we need to change it into a set. A set is not ordered, right? So let's change it into set. And if you like print now vocabulary, you will see that it's, it's printing out like this. Um, but understand that uh, if, uh, if a new data set, new character comes in, like let's say you learn after some time, a new character comes in. So what we need to do is that uh, we need to have an order, right? You do not know where it will go in, right? Um, the problem is to create an order of, uh, so to create a number, to create, uh, to assign a single numeric value to each of these characters, we need to have a very specific way of, function like when a new character comes in you need to see that where it goes and we need to have a proper step-by-step -step algorithm a simple algorithm so what we do is that we order it the entire thing and then assign uh, each single um characters to 
the corresponding index. So let me show you. So what I mean is that we will change this set into a list because then you can do easier operations on that and then we will order it. Okay. Um, we will order it into uh, into a, into I mean into corresponding sequence of characters. For example, I'm, I'm showing you what I mean that yeah, so you will get the sequence of characters out from here. okay. I've already written it for you. So what I mean mean to say is that you will get this sorted array. And let's see the vocabulary of sorted. Sorry. So you will get a, a sequential object, a sequential thing. Now let's say this, this really helps because when this gives you an algorithm to assign a number in a unique manner. Now what I want to do, uh, we want to assign one single number to each of this characters, right? It's how we're going to do it. So what we will do that we will, we will take each of these characters and assign the corresponding index. So if the character sequence is C1, C2, C3, C1, CN, we will assign C1, we will assign 1 to C1, 2 to C2, 3 to C3, and dot, 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 N to CN, right? Now how to do that? For that, we will need a data structure called dictionary. And the, the good part of a dictionary is that you can assign each of this together. So this assignment is needed, uh, this assignment needed, and then we'll capture the assignment to uh, make a function of any general input, right? Uh, if I give a bigger text and then it can assign, or a different text, then it can take up from these vocabulary assignments of numbers and characters and then build a function from there. So we have already built a vocabulary. That's good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign or make a dictionary, dictionary of, or rather the relationship of these characters by this very fact that we have this sorted vocabulary, right? After this sorted vocabulary, we will be assigning numbers by the indices. How are we gonna do that? So let's define a dictionary first. So this is a vocabulary. Now let's define, define dictionary first. So we want to build a dictionary that captures characters to the corresponding indices. So we create a null dictionary. And then what we do is that for, so we, so now there's an interesting function called enumerate. Now enumerate is does exactly this. It gives the indices and the values of that. So for example, enumerate, so let's say for, let's first write enumerate. Okay. So if you write enumerate, you will see that it's an iterable, iterable object that returns, you can see zero comma sequence of zero, one comma sequence of one, two comma sequence of two. So it's written indices and the values and that exactly what we want, right? So what we do is that, so it's index comma character of this. So we loop over this enumerate objects. So now what we want to enumerate the vocabulary, right? From the vocabulary we are creating, um, from vocabulary we are creating this whole dictionary. Now for this, we're taking these indices and the corresponding values. What we're going to do is the simple thing. We're going to assign to this dictionary the corresponding indices. So let's see. Sorry. And if you want to print it, let's see. Uh, it's already printed. I missed again. Oh. So what you're going to do is we will print this. Uh, And you can see that for zero, the, like the space is assigned, the corresponding vocabulary, each of them is assigned to the corresponding indices. Now, let's test it out. Uh, let's say you want to see where H comes. Okay, so there is no value of H. Uh, problem is, Yes. So what we need to do is that we need to assign uh, characters to this. For each characters, we are assigning an integer. So for finding the numeric value of this character, we are to each of these characters we are assigning a number. 
right? And similarly, we can create this is uh, a number we are we got we assigned two to H uh, and by the corresponding uh, vocabulary specificity. So let's now uh, we need to do it for also the other way around that we need to do. Let's say now you, I, I'm giving you a number, then how will you change it into the corresponding characters? So we will do it similarly. We'll say indices to characters. And what we'll do is that we'll do for, again, the same thing. Vocabulary. What you can also do here is that without doing this entire thing, you can just copy paste it and here we assign i to ch at i place the corresponding character now we can see that how it works is this now can we get h yes it's coming out too and similarly Let's say we print it. And for the next one, we will see what's coming up for two. So you can see two and H are coming up. So let's say you can give E and let's see what's coming up. So seven, E is assigned to seven, which makes sense. So let's, let's print a vocabulary also. So if you see the vocabulary, you will see that one, two, zero, one, two. So for two, H is assigned three, four, five, six, seven. At seven, E is assigned. So that's why it makes sense. So we have built a dictionary that S is making making these two different uh, dictionaries together, and we have seen it's working. Now we have transformed the vocabulary into sequence, right? Numeric sequence. What we need to do is the following now. Now we need to build a function that transforms this using the dictionary and text in a new text data set and transform into a new a sequence of numbers and vice versa. So we need to build a decoder that text in a sequence of numbers and then transform into the corresponding text. So let's try to do that. So we need to build a define a function, def and code. We want to build. so we only input a string, right? For a string, we need to read each and every string elements so for character in string sorry what we want to do is that we're going to output the corresponding now understand that the the return will be we are trying to build a list of numbers right so let's we want to change a string into a numeric string so we define an empty list and what will happen is that for every character in this string we will append this output of the numeric output to that numeric list, right? Add it. So we will append that. What we will append? The corresponding output. So we have the string. So we will take this, this, out with that corresponding, uh, append the corresponding numeric output. So we are calling the dictionary to get the number and appending that to this numeric stuff. And then, oops, sorry. And then we will return So what is happening is that you can use shift and enter to run the cell. So mistakenly I'm typing both together instead of enter to go to the next step. So we want to return what? We want to return uh, numeric, okay? Oh, sorry. Now let's see what this numeric gives. Let's see the encoder. Um, so encode, let's say, Hey, well, let's say we have to create, hello, I am SM. So it's like, it's a subset of this, right? So let's see how it encodes. So it encodes at this sequence of numbers using the dictionary, right? Now we want to build an opposite thing that we want to get this sequence of numbers. What if this sequence of numbers were given and you want to build it into a string using the vocabulary. So let's call it the code and we want to take it numeric sequence and we want to define an empty string. 
an empty string is defined like this. Sorry. And again, we will do this. We want to scan through the numeric numbers. So let's call it num in numeric. We we'll scan through this and we want to change it to this. So we'll append. So here it it's adds like this. What we'll do is we will change this to num. That's interesting. We can also do it with i to be uh, to make you understand what we're doing. And then we will return. So what we're doing is calling the dictionary and adding appending the output of that string output uh, from the integer to character output of that corresponding string for each of the elements uh, to the string and appending to the string. And we return the string. So let's see, we want to decode, um, let's say a list of one, seven, one, four, five, two. So you can see, oops, I, we need to print it, otherwise it will not show stuff. So you can see the first one is uh, the sequence of integers. And the second one is, you can, the first one is a space probably, I guess. Uh, I don't know, I have to check. Um, yeah, so essentially it's, it's no, it's not a space because there are four characters, four outputs. So uh, it's comma MSH, uh, which is interesting. Right now, uh, to understand whether this is really working or not, this it's 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 a one to one function from the input from the input string, get an integer, a numeric list, and then you should apply the decode step to get to the final. Uh, again, uh, it's it's one to one function to get the actual string. So let's see if we can do that or not. Uh, so what we do is that we print. So we are using, we are decoding the encoded list of that hello MSM. So what we'll get is output is, so X into X inverse or one by X or F of F inverse, just like that functional composition. Decode is F, encode is FX and decode is F inverse of X. So we're gonna get that X, F of F inverse of X or F inverse. F inverse of fx is x, so we're gonna get the same thing. So yeah, so if you comment it out, you will see that hello SM is coming, very good. And uh, that's the basic thing. Now let's say you want to add u. Now there is a key error u because this u is not in the vocabulary, right? So therefore the larger the vocabulary, the better it is, right? The q is not in the vocabulary, but if you add u here, let's say, and now it's coming up because you added the vocabulary. It's already added to the vocabulary like this because we have to use this text to use it to the vocabulary. So what we have done is that we have written and we read and printed text data. We created a vocabulary of characters. Then we changed the characters to numbers and vice versa. We use those characters as a dictionary. We use those characters, uh, the, those dictionary to encode and decode sentences uh, using the map. And the final step is reading uh, a text file. So what we have taken, I have take, I have uploaded the TXT file of um, Constitution of India. And also uh, the, it's it's a film by Shotujit Ray. Um, he's a, he, you know, he has won Oscar. Um, um, and he has written a film, Royal Bengal Raho Show. Uh, it's a Feluda film um, in, in Bengali. So I will show you that you can uh, use any language out there um, to, to to uh for this transformer that's that makes it more exciting right and also the reason i believe i'm really excited about llms and stuff because if you see vision i'm working in vision in medical imaging at penn state uh if you see vision vision is it's, it's kind of an input you understand the input and whatever happens inside but language is kind of an expression of insight right which are two different things and that's why it makes it more exciting expression has like whatever you're thinking you're expressing and and the other thing, vision is like you're inputting and it's whatever is happening inside you don't know. Now, whatever you're expressing, you know what's happening. There's some logic, there is everything out there. So I think that's what really excites me about uh, language that uh, you can actually do a lot of things with language. There's logic, there is understanding, there is decision. A lot of things are happening. That's why I'm excited about logic uh, uh, of the language, I should say. Terence Tower recently, Terence Tower is a famous mathematician. Uh, he he has won Fulls Medal. You should research about him. He has he's trying to build or he is in 
and his team is trying to build an AI for solving mathematical Olympiad problems, which are pretty, pretty hard. So that means people are trying to understand problem solving, how to solve problems, how to think using or making, making the model think using this language and getting grasp. If we understand how thinking and decision making and everything is input in the language, we can, if we can understand it literally, then we can input in the model and make it learn. This is what I'm excited about, about uh, LLMs and large language models. And um, okay, so now the final thing is that we have this text file and we use this text file to do the same thing at the beginning. Okay, so we'll have to learn this text file from the beginning. So instead of this, instead of this, what I will do is that I will learn the text file. I will read the text file. Okay. So how to read it? Let's take the constitution of India. So I forgot the code. Let me see it. Yes, you have to with with open. Not we will do. We will have the file path. Now we have the reading mode, right? So essentially, what I did is essentially what uh, LLM does. I forgot, so I just saw the first O oh, with open, and then I'm generating the rest of the one. My mind is generating the rest of the code, and this is exactly what we want to know. Uh, of course, you can say I've memorized or I have understood. Uh, it's a combination of both. What LM is doing right now is memorizing and giving the output, but we also make want to make it understand. Like R actually means reading, and that's also a bit of the whole goal. But it's literally understanding. Uh, is also important. That's what the whole research is going towards. Okay, so we have this oh, with open, we are opening the file, we are reading it, and now we have to use the encoding. Uh, what encoding is it using? It's using the encoding of UTF-8. And now we have read this file, and we are want to save this file as F, right? Now what we want to do is that, we want to change this file strings into F dot, I think read, right? So, and now we have the text read. So essentially to read entire. So what, what we will do is that before I apply it here, I will run it and you, let's see the, how the text comes up. So let's print a part of the text. The first 200 characters and you can see it prints the first 200 characters. You can do the same thing for the Royal Bengal Rohesha and it will come up in Bengali. Um, you can also do it in Hindi. Uh, since I'm Bengali, I wanted to share this because if some Bengali person sh sees this, he or she will be excited. So uh, this is uh, Raul Bengal Rahul show, and uh, uh, this is extremely exciting. You can see Feluda out here. He's the main character. Um, and you can print the text. So using this text, uh, let's say you can now do the entire thing out here. Um, and there's some H. Uh, what is the issue? So let's see, uh, what is the issue? So we have done this vocabulary. So everything is okay. So it seems like what is, what it seems like is that the capital H is not inside uh, the whole vocabulary. I think small h should be. So small h is also not there. That's uh, something uh, seems to be wrong. Yeah, SM, it's fine. Small H is not there. Oh, it's a Royal, Bay, Royal Bengal Rohesh. That's why it's not there. Um, so we should get the constitution. That's why I was a bit uh, surprised at what H is not used in the constitution. That's, that's an interesting discovery. Um, so let's see it now. And you can see, yeah, perfect. It's working now. And of course, all the characters are there inside the whole vocabulary. And you can see the vocabulary may not be large. Uh, let's try to see. So let's print the vocabulary. And you can see all the vocabularies. Are there. It's not really large. It shouldn't be large. And different characters are there. The large, the small, so even the integers are there. So you're defining a different integer to an integer character. So that's the beauty of it. So yeah, so this is all about the entire course uh, of the small uh, tutorial of character sequence, numerical sequence. In the next part, as I have discussed that, I will be discussing about the experimental setup. like. 
what is the what should be the input now we have known that we have can transform the character sequence to a numerical sequence now we know that oh uh, now the model can learn right now the question is how to make it learn and that's what we'll discuss in the experimental setup and write the code out there and then next after that we'll be talking about model definition and evaluation that's an in, that's the most important point but in the next video you will be learning how to do the experimental setup what should be the experimental setup and that's where i will introduce torch uh, why torch is a very important aspect so thank you for staying till this point of time and hope you enjoy this and uh, stay tuned for the next part of the video i'm so excited to share this to you guys so bye bye see you in the next video next part of the video